finally back with a recipe video this week and if you know me then you know this is my absolute favorite time of the year to celebrate seasonal produce i love celebrating seasonal produce all throughout the year but there is something so special about september in particular so today's video is proudly sponsored by fiverr more on that coming shortly so the theme is late summer recipes i've got this whipped tahini dish with roasted carrots and potatoes served with the most amazing pistachio duco which i promise you will try and you will just be putting it on everything like i've been doing i've also got this really well balanced soothing nourishing warming courgette soup which might sound a bit unusual but trust me it works courgettes naturally have this creamy element to them and the other recipe that i've got for you is this aubergine and tomato salad called a zaluk for more of my recipes you can head over to my website and go and check out all of my ebooks over there as always i love to hear which recipe catches your eye first which one you'll be trying out first let me know in the comments let's jump right into this week's recipe video. This first recipe has been on constant rotation in my kitchen this summer, and I'm not quite ready to let it go just yet. This is a zaluk. It is the most delicious salad full of fresh tomatoes, aubergine, herbs, spices. The spice profile in this recipe is unbelievable. As you probably know, I love warm foods, but this salad is also delicious served cold as well. For this zaluk, we are going to need some ripe, juicy tomatoes. So I just grabbed whatever I could find in my farmer's market. We are gonna come to the end of tomato season soon, but for now they are still available in abundance. We're also going to be needing some aubergine. Again, aubergine is still in season. This recipe calls for fresh parsley. Just know that you can tone it down if you want to, or you can turn it up if you want to. A recipe is just a guideline. Always best to start with smaller amounts and add gradually taste as you go along. We're going to be needing some fresh lemon juice. The spices that we're going to use include cumin powder, paprika and chili flakes. This is a method that I've experimented with the most and found to be really, really delicious. But of course, if you want, you can roast the aubergine. Um, there are so many ways that you could work this recipe. To start, we're gonna prepare our aubergine. I decided to remove the skin. It just really depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I will leave the skin on. Sometimes I'll leave a bit of skin on. Sometimes I'll remove it fully. So we're gonna slice our aubergine and we're gonna chop it into cubes, into small cubes. We're then going to put our aubergine to steam. So I steamed it for about 10 minutes. I feel like this step makes a difference in the final outcome of the zaluk but if it's too long-winded and you don't want to do the step then I guess you could skip it and just cook it down on the pan as you'll see in a minute but I blanched the tomatoes so I could remove the skin I just did this really simple method of placing the tomatoes into a pot pouring over boiling hot water and simply just covering the pot and leaving them for about 10 minutes or so so the tomatoes will then be really easy to peel so for the fun part for the action for the juiciness of action actually putting this recipe together we're going to start by chopping up and de-seeding our tomatoes we're then going to crush and I say crush because I, I don't know I just like crushing garlic I like crushing it and then finally chopping it we're just going to get maximum flavor out of this garlic because this is a fundamental part of making a really tasty zaluk so chop 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 that garlic as finely as possible and do the same with the fresh herbs so the fresh parsley and the fresh coriander we're really just wanting to loosen everything up into a bowl we're going to add in our fresh herbs so the coriander and the parsley we're then going to place in all of that fresh garlic along with the cumin powder the paprika the chili flakes some sea salt give it some black pepper we're going to swirl in that extra virgin olive oil squeeze over lots and lots of lemon juice and then place in those fresh tomatoes this alone would be the most delicious salad it would be very heavy on the garlic taste but it would be delicious so we're not finished just yet so heat a shallow pan on a low heat and place in the steamed aubergine so we're going to cook the zaluk down for about 10 minutes if you want you can leave the ingredients chunky i like to crush mine with a little potato masher you could use the back of a spoon this salad is absolute perfection serve it dipping style sharing style you can top it with some more fresh herbs swirl on some extra virgin olive oil if this is a recipe that you're familiar with and that you love to prepare i would love to hear your take on a zaluk like what you do differently i would be really interested so let me know if you've never tried this recipe and this will be the first time preparing it i guarantee that you are going to really really enjoy this one 
When it comes to my business, I definitely know my strengths. And for the areas in which I need some assistance or require a freelancer in a specific field, Fiverr has got me covered. Examples of digital services that Fiverr offer include graphic design. I feel like this is particularly helpful in my field as a content creator, different forms of digital marketing, e-commerce development. I mean, the list is truly endless. To be completely transparent when it comes to the design or anything technical to do with my website, I just don't have the skills required. I teamed up with a Fiverr freelancer, Petros Digital, who has literally transformed my site. So my website was in desperate need of a total refresh, revamp, new season, new beginnings. There is a new recipe section where I will be sharing my written recipes from YouTube and Instagram. So it will make it way easier for you to have access to the recipes that I share online. Petros Digital went the extra mile. There was a lot of kind of like back end stuff with my website. He was patient, he was professional with great communication skills, which I personally think is super important when you're working with any Fiverr freelancer. For whatever your business requires, Fiverr will have a freelancer who can cater to what you are looking for. So make sure you head to fiverr.co slash tishwonders to check out the services available to you and you can get 10% off using the code tishwonders. When I say simplicity at its finest, this is a recipe that comes to mind. This is my whipped yogurt tahini with roasted potatoes and carrots and a pistachio duca. This pistachio duca, I'm warning you from now, you will actually be hooked on this. It is unbelievably delicious, so simple to make. And the great thing is you can make like a big batch of it and just like store it and put it on everything. For our pistachio duca, we are going to be needing some pistachios, of course. We're also gonna be toasting and just um, unlocking the flavor of so many spices for this duca so we're going to be using some cumin which is probably one of my favorite spice seeds ever it seems like i add it to everything um some fennel seeds and also some just flavor packed coriander seeds along with toasting our spice seeds for our duca spice blend we're also going to toast some sesame seeds and add some of these in as well so for our whipped tahini and yogurt kind of dip or like base of what we're going to place the roasted vegetables and pistachio duca on we're going to need some tahini i always say that i like to use a good light tahini not one that's so bitter um and i'm using greek yogurt of course if you're dairy free you can use an alternative that will work just as well for any tahini dip or dressing or anything in between you need some acidity so we're going to be using some lemon juice and we are going to be roasting some carrots and some potatoes so yeah make sure you have some sweet tasting carrots and some good potatoes for this recipe so i have learned from previous experiences that the best and only way to make a pistachio duca is to make a big batch of it we're going to start by basically toasting our pistachios so grab a pan place in your pistachios and you're just going to kind of like dry toast them just moving the pan constantly you don't want to burn them you just want them to have this slight kind of I'd say golden but it's not quite golden but you know just kind of slight toasted look to them so place the toasted pistachios in a pestle and mortar and move on to toasting your other ingredients in the pan so grab your spice seeds so your coriander seeds your cumin seeds and your fennel seeds and your sesame seeds and just toast everything for around one minute maybe one minute and a half you'll be able to tell and you'll be able to smell the like fragrant smells releasing from the seeds and then you will know that they are ready to be added to the pestle and mortar and to be crushed and combined and to ultimately create the duca spice blend so before grinding everything up i placed in a few other ingredients so i added in some sea salt some garlic powder and some dried mixed herbs so very very simple you can start to just crush everything so it is that simple this is pretty much your duca after you've crushed it this is your duca spice blend which like i said please make it in a big batch if you're able to because you just will not be able to get enough of it it will last for months it will last for months as long as it's stored in an airtight container or jar it will last for a long time to continue we are going to chop up our vegetables so that means slicing up our potatoes and chopping up our carrots for the potatoes i like to parboil them just so they cook well in the oven it's just a step that i like um you don't have to do it 
I just prefer to do it. I place my potatoes and chopped carrots onto a flat baking sheet along with some sea salt, some black pepper, some whole garlic cloves because there is really nothing better than roasted garlic with whipped tahini and pistachio duca. There is just no limit on how yummy and delicious and enjoyable food can be. Swirl on some olive oil, making sure everything is glistening, everything is covered well and um, yeah, everything looks seasoned. Place your baking tray into an oven. Whilst the vegetables are roasting, we can go on and make this whipped yogurt and tahini. Now I call it whipped because I feel like the yogurt adds like a whipped type of consistency, but we're not actually going to whip it. We're going to mix it well, but we're not going to whip it, but it feels whipped. So grab a bowl and place in your yogurt along with your tahini. Drizzle that tahini in. Squeeze in some lemon juice, place in some sea salt, some black pepper, some cumin powder. I drizzled in a little bit of maple syrup. Yeah, I just stirred everything, mixed everything well. I had a little taste and it needed something extra. It needed a little garlic hit. So I placed in a little bit of garlic powder, which just took it to the next level. So do you see what I mean about the tahini just having that like kind of whipped consistency? so delicious so remove your roasted vegetables the garlic cloves will be caramelized the potatoes and carrots will be golden so yeah all that's left for this recipe is to serve you can serve this recipe any way that you want you can do it as like one big kind of sharing plate you can do it as individual plates it might be a little side dish that you pair with like i don't know whatever protein you're eating i served mine up as a starter so i grabbed these little plates and I swooshed on that whipped tahini just using the back of a spoon. I then placed over the roasted vegetables, so the roasted carrots and potatoes, just look, just look. And then delicately sprinkled on that pistachio duca. I believe I added more after. It wouldn't be right if I didn't drizzle on a little bit of olive oil, so that's what I did. I'm actually gonna be honest, I ate both plates. They were both for me. I was cooking by myself and I, and I enjoyed them by myself. I really do make a big deal out of kind of setting the mood for myself i think it's very important if you're just used to cooking for one then yeah make make a thing out of it enjoy it enjoy it just as you were cooking and kind of you know nourishing someone else nourish yourself and that is the whole experience of cooking this one is a must try especially that pistachio duca oh yes the final recipe is this courgette basil and butter bean soup there has definitely been a change in temperature. It's feeling a lot colder. This soup is creamy, it is nourishing. The butter beans add a filling touch to this recipe. We're also gonna add a pumpkin and sunflower seed topping. So ingredients for this soup include courgettes. Courgettes are a summer vegetable, but they are still widely available right now. I say this every year, but they're probably my favorite vegetable to work with. And I'm always saddened to see them go. So I'll be making the most of them right until the end. We're also going to be adding in some butter beans. I'm really going through a butter bean phase right now. If you want to work with any other white bean that you have available, that would work perfectly too. The butter beans add like a gorgeous texture to the soup and actually a really beautiful creaminess as well. So for the base, the seasoning, the flavorings of this soup, we're going to be using some shallots. You can definitely sub for regular white onions. That will work. We're gonna need some garlic. If you wanna add a little fresh chili in there, that's completely optional. It's up to you. If you want to, go for it. When I am creating a recipe or I'm just freestyling in the kitchen, I always focus on a few things. One being, how can I really ramp up the nutrition in what I'm eating? Adding nourishing bone broth where and when I can is a massive add-on to any meal. I'm also gonna be adding in some fresh basil, which for me is a very summer feel type of herb, um, but it really works well in this soup and just really Really brings it to life. So like I mentioned, we're going to make a little soup topper with some sunflower seeds and some pumpkin seeds. We're going to simply roast them, splash them with tamari, you'll see. So we're going to begin creating this courgette butter bean and basil soup. So we're going to start by peeling and finely chopping up our shallots. Maybe you've chosen to use white onions, which is fine. We're going to move on to peeling and finely chopping up our garlic. If you're choosing to add a little bit of fresh chili, then go ahead and chop that up. Use whatever chili you have available to you. Previously, when I've made this soup, I've just always naturally gravitated towards grating the courgettes. But of course, if you want, you can chop them up. It's all gonna get blended at the end, so it will work either way. But yeah, I went ahead and grated my courgettes. So to cook and prepare the soup, we're going to grab a heavy base pan. We're going to heat it on a medium heat and swirl in a little bit of olive oil. 
So we're gonna place in our shallots, followed on by our chopped garlic, and we're just gonna cook everything down for a few minutes, and then we're gonna throw in a few seasonings. So this is the part where you can get creative and add in different types of dried herbs that you enjoy. Maybe fuse that with a few spices. No surprise, I added in some cumin seeds, um, some coriander, and some herb de Provence. I placed in some sea salt, some black pepper, and I should have thrown the chili in before, but I forgot, and so I added the chili in. So we're gonna continue mixing the shallots and garlic, just cooking everything down, releasing the aromas, releasing the flavor for this soup, and then we're gonna throw in our grated courgettes. I sometimes can just tell by eye when something needs more salt, and I just felt like this needed more salt, so I added in a little bit more salt because I had quite a few courgettes in there. And then I placed in my cooked butter beans followed on by the bone broth. So I let everything merge together, just turning the heat up a little bit so everything can cook well. And then I covered the pot, reducing the heat. I cooked the soup down for around 15 minutes, just making sure I kept an eye on it, making sure I was stirring regularly. The last few steps in making this soup included throwing in the fresh basil and simply blitzing it. So I grabbed my little hand blender and uh, just whizzed it up. Depending on the mood you're in, you can leave it having a little bit of texture. I was in the mood just to have my soup smooth. So that's what I did. I just smoothed it out. Like I said, the courgettes and the butter beans make it very creamy, but if you want an extra creamy hit, feel free to add in some cream or some coconut milk if you want to. So for the tamari pumpkin, and sunflower seed mix that we're going to top the soup with I simply just laid the sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds on a flat baking tray I placed them in the oven until they kind of got a little bit toasty probably for about like 10 minutes on a 190 degrees Celsius oven the trick to getting these seeds incredible is to splash them immediately like you cannot wait as soon as you remove them from the oven, splash them with the tamari and then just go ahead and give them a good mix. You can drizzle in a little bit of olive oil if you just want like a little glossy finish. So I served my soup up. This is just one of those very, very simple, but it feels so good type of recipes. I had a few butter beans left over, which I just kind of crisped up in a pan and I threw on those tamari, pumpkin and sunflower seeds. I finished by scattering over a few basil leaves and drizzling over a little bit of olive oil. This one is a great welcome to the changing seasons. As we are changing and adapting into a new season, I hold a strong belief that eating the food that is grown local to us can really assist us during this transition period, which for some of us can be very, very challenging to adapt to. I am praying that these recipes will spark something within you that will guide you to just step into your kitchen space, to create some beautiful recipes that you deserve, to nourish yourself from the inside out so a massive thank you to fiverr for sponsoring today's video remember to head to fiverr.co slash tish wonders and use the code tish wonders to get 10% off i will see you all soon in my next video see you bye